is that time of the year that we start to see that white stuff falling from the sky. The temperatures are freezing, bone chilling cold. What better way to warm up than with some hot cocoa and something to sit it on. Hello and welcome. I am Jackie with Jackie Russell Creates where we talk about everything quilting. I give tips, tricks, and techniques so you can conquer that next sewing project. In the meantime, why don't you do me a favor and click that subscribe button and that notification bell. And let's get started making some weaved coasters. We're going to make a set of four. And I'm also going to give you and show you a recipe on how to make your own hot cocoa. And turn these in to a great gift idea as well. So let's get started. So to make these adorable weaved coasters out of scrap fabric, all you need is five inch squares. So this would be perfect for a charm pack. If you have a holiday charm pack, just whip out some fabric from them. So you're going to need a background fabric. All of these are at five inch square. Then you're going to need four coordinating fabrics to make your weave. You're going to need a lining fabric and I chose to have the same fabric for my backing and my lining and then you're going to need a scrap piece of batting. That's it. You're going to take your four pieces for the weave part and you're going to fold them in half and give them a good press. So then they're going to end up measuring two and a half by five. And yes, you need to have the fold line. So they do need to be cut at the two and a half or the five inch square. So comment below and let me know. Are you a marshmallow person? Do you have to have marshmallows in your hot chocolate? Or do you like to have cream or something else in your hot chocolate? I like lots of marshmallows and a dash of cream. So once we have them all pressed, you're going to take your lining fabric, the fabric that is not going to be seen, so it could be that one fabric that no one, that you just were like, oh, that's, I don't like that. That's an ugly fabric. You want that down first. And you want the pretty side down. Then you're going to add your batting. And then you're going to add your background fabric. And I'm going to use Wonder Clips. And what, this is how I do it to keep all these layers lined up. So I'm just going to do the lining, the backing, and the batting, and I'm going to line up them corners first. And I'm going to clip them with the Wonder Clips. That's just going to hold these all in place because we're going to be adding some more layers to this. So I do recommend that you have a walking foot on your machine because you do have so many layers that you're going to be going through and it will help feed it through your machine a lot easier. Now you're going to take one of your folds and you're going to line it up raw edges to raw edges at the top. And then I'm just going to remove that one clip and clip again. And then I'm going to clip with this one. Your fold edge is going to be toward the center. You're going to take another folded, put the fold toward the center, and line it up along the edge, overlapping the first one you did, making sure all the edges are aligned. Then I like to come in and pin 
where they overlap. So I'm just going to put a clip to hold them down. And then I'm going to clip this one. Then you're going to take your third one, fold to the center, and line up those edges and clip. Once again, I'm going to clip in the center. And now that the black, or the first one we put on, you're going to have them two meeting up. So I want to make sure that my clip is holding both of those down. So I try to make sure it's right in the center. Then we're going to put our last one on. We're going to overlap, lining up those edges. I'm going to clip there, and I'm going to clip this center piece before I remove this other clip. So now we're going to remove the corner clip, lift that first piece up, and put the last piece down and the first piece up over making sure to line up all your edges and clip that corner. Then I'm going to clip that center, making sure to have all the edges coming to the end. Then I'm going to take that one and reposition it so it's laying. So there is it ready to go to the sewing machine. We're going to stitch a quarter inch all the way around. You do not have to leave a space. Stitch all the way around. Make sure the beginning and end you do do a little back space to hold them in. So a quarter inch all the way around. Leave your needle down when you pivot. And then I like to have a straight pin and all tweezers, something to hold this edge down so it don't fold over. Now that we have it all sewn together, we're going to clip our corners, being sure not to clip into your stitches. You can also kind of take the corner and kind of taper it in if you feel that it's still kind of bulky at those corners. It just helps give it a little cleaner, crisper corner. And then, because these are folded and weaved and we did not sew down these, we're going to use that to turn. I like to get my finger up in that corner and really push it through. And if you need some assistance to get the point through, you can use a pointer. I just like to use the end of my pen and really poke those corners through. Then I make sure it's all laying flat. I give it a good press. And now we're going to take it to the sewing machine. And I'm going to give it a top stitch. You don't have to give a top stitch. I just think it will be, makes it look cleaner. And so I'm going to top stitch around. Trim for it. Cheers.
And there we have our coaster. Now let's go make some hot chocolate. So in my big bowl here, I have three cups of dry powdered milk. And to that, we're going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of salt and a half a cup of sugar. And I like to take my sugar and run it through a sieve. You can also put this in the blender or you can do it if you have a spice grinder just to help, you know, break up any of those bigger chunks. Plus it makes it a little smoother. Then you're going to do the same thing with a third cup of cocoa powder. Just help breaking up some of those chunks. Hi, Sugar May. When we make cookies, my older grandson, he likes to use the sifter. He'll sit here and go shake, 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 and make sure it all gets sifted pretty good. And then you're just going to mix it. This is where if it was in a blender, you just put it through. But you just mix it until you can't see any of that powdered milk. Now, if you want it sweeter, you can always add more sugar. If you want it more chocolate, you can add more chocolate. Now, I did a heaping third of a cup, and I use um, dark chocolate cocoa powder instead of just the regular cocoa powder. <clears throat> so this recipe is very flexible. You know, you make it to your taste. So if you need more sugar, add more sugar. If you want it a sweeter one, add more chocolate. If you want it chocolate tear, I guess <laughs> that's is how you would put it. And you can see that it makes quite a bit of hot chocolate. And you only need a quarter of a cup of mix in your cup. And then just add some hot water. So you can take and go ahead and add a quarter cup of this mix into a cellophane bag and put a cute little top on the top of it and put it with your four coasters and give it as a gift or if you maybe put it um, so they have four cups of hot cocoa with their coasters. Once it's all dissolved, I add my marshmallows and we have big square marshmallows from roasting for s'mores so we're just going to add one of those to our hot chocolate and now it's ready so i hope you enjoyed this video of making a fast simple project a coasters of four and some hot chocolate to go with them to give as a gift as a gift exchange or just for maybe your neighbor or keep it for yourself as you see it makes plenty the recipe and the cut descriptions will be listed down below, and I'll also put them in the pinned comments so you can be able to find them. And until then, till the next time, happy quilting, my friends.